I'm gonna show you exactly how I made $6,700 in profit in less than 90 days to pay off my laser. So are you ready? Let's go. Hey there, I'm Emily, otherwise known as That Mom with a Laser and the brand ambassador for Eon Laser USA, and I have helped thousands of people on their laser journey. No kidding. It took me eight months working as a stay-at-home mom part-time with three little ones at home, ages six months, two years, and four years, without any experience on the onset of a pandemic to pay off my laser. If I had no idea what I was doing, which I didn't, and I could pay off my laser in less than a year, could I possibly do it in a shorter time frame and create a recipe, if you will, to show you how to do it too? Yes, I can, and I did. So I set out to pay off my second laser, my Eon Mira 5, in a short time frame, and I wanted to do this with three things in mind because ideally the point is to teach you guys how to do it too. One, could somebody who was just getting started and didn't know anything about their laser, was just getting started in this whole journey, copy what I do? Yes. Okay, two, could somebody with no social following also have success here? Because I know, all right, I have naysayers like you out there who are thinking, oh, well, of course she did well. She has thousands of followers. Nope, I started this from the ground up and I told none of you. Mm -hmm. And then three, could somebody with no business experience also be successful at this? Now, to be fair, I have a little bit of experience now and I kind of know what I'm doing. So that's why we're recording this, so I can give you that knowledge so you can take it and knock it out of the park. With the proper preparation, planning, and mindset, that's the most important key here, okay? You can pay off your laser in less than 90 days. And more importantly, get into profit mode. Step one is to plan ahead. In December, I was already planning for the next quarter, okay? And based off of what most Etsy articles say, Etsy coaches, and more importantly, what members in my community who are already having success say, most recommend you wanna have about 30 items in your shop, especially if you're just starting out. So that's what I set out to do. I started planning what were the products that I wanted to create. I pretty much broke them down into two types of products. One, products that I can hopefully sell all year round, okay? Because I don't want to only chase, um, you know, big holidays. I do want something to create consistent revenue, but I'm in the early stages of this business, so I'm still figuring that out. So I tried to choose products that I can hopefully sell year round, and this is the most important key. If we're gonna pay off the laser in a short time frame, I was gonna target a holiday. In this scenario, it was Easter. All right, so let's pop into my Etsy shop, even though, you know, that now this is already past. I'm looking back at the past to kind of review everything with you. Let's look at the products that I ended up putting into the shop. Okay, so right now you see me updating things because now uh, teacher appreciation is coming up and so is Mother's Day, so I'm slowly but surely adding new listings, okay? But I still have up here the listings that I'm trying to see how well they'll do year round. I will admit, I definitely need to improve the photography on them. You can tell that my newer photos, they're much better, okay? My older photos need work or updating, and that might be another reason why they're not performing as well as I'd like them to. So let's see here. So, so far I have 15 generic ones that I can leave up all the time. And if you notice, a lot of them, like these keychains here, I've just duplicated the listing and changed out the photo and the color of the rainbow or the um, icon that is on, not the icon, the image that is on the actual disc here. So it's technically one product with several variations. So I have duplicated that listing several times. Um, and Etsy likes seeing you active in the platform. So one day I uploaded one um, listing, the next day I added another. I may have added one to three per day, just depending, okay? And actually, I see I have this duplicated here. I don't know why I have to go and check that. But anyhow, so these are my active listings. I am slowly but surely adding more again. And let's go into the ones that I have now deactivated so you can see which ones I had during the Easter season. I'll go to listings here and inactive listings, okay? So here are some of the products that I was adding throughout January, 
all of quarter one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven listings for Easter. Um, a lot of these did not perform as well as I had hoped they would. And that's okay. It just means next year I'm going to have to make them better. Like my tags didn't do well at all. I'm going to have to come up with something cuter or better. You know, my best sellers by far, as you guys know, were the Easter baskets. Okay. And then I had some um, uh, St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's things. They didn't perform well at all. But my point is I kept filling up the shop because eventually something would take, right? So here I have 15 listings down plus the 15 listings that I have that I've kept that are generic, I have about a total of 30 listings, which is consistent with what I'm sharing with you and what um, you know, Etsy tells you over and over again, 20 to 30 listings in the shop. I'm working my way back up there as I add the new listings for Mother's Day and uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Did I know which products would sell? No, I'm not like you know, a psychic, I can't see into the future and I'm just starting out, okay? But did I have a hunch? Absolutely. I'm willing to bet that you have hundreds of saved photos, screenshots, websites, all these different places, you know, full of things that have given you inspiration of things that you wanna make. Everybody does that, okay? So I pretty much used you know, what's available to me. I go onto social media and I do a search for gifts for Easter and see what comes up. TikTok will show you what people are buying. So will Instagram. I mean, go to target.com. They pay thousands of dollars for market research. What kind of things are they putting in their dollar spot or what kind of Easter items were they selling? It's that simple. Get inspiration from there and then work on developing a product that you actually want to sell, okay? We all have different styles and that's how your brand is over time going to reveal itself to you if you don't already have a clear vision. Step two, decide what website you're gonna to use to sell your products. Now, for the purpose of this experiment, I intentionally chose Etsy. Hear me out, okay? I am not a one website kind of person at all. Throughout the rest of this year, you are gonna see me tackle Amazon Handmade, having my own website, um, wholesaling. I'm gonna do it all, okay? Because there are plenty of different ways to make money here. And I want a piece of everybody's traffic. I want a piece of Amazon's customer base. I want to save money for my own customer base that I develop on my own. And I want a piece of Etsy's traffic, okay? My suggestion is to consider Etsy. Why? It is the easiest for, in my opinion, for a brand new person to get started with. It's easy to make a listing, okay? Creating a listing on other sites is a little more challenging. Um, and they don't charge you until somebody actually orders something. So for many people, if you are tight on money and spending $30 a month on a Shopify account is intimidating to you, Etsy might be a better route. And three, more importantly, if you don't know how to market your product, if you don't have any business experience and you don't have a network, you need a customer base to sell your products to. Why not tap into Etsy's customer base? You can start your own website, but you have to be ready to do your own marketing. And unless you're not prepared for that, you might wanna try something else. That's why I ended up going with Etsy specifically for this project. Step number three. Now, if you're already established in business, this step may not apply to you and you can skip to number four. But if you are just getting started from the ground floor, please go ahead and secure all of the domains and all of the sites that you would want your site to be attached to. For example, grab the TikTok account, grab the Instagram account, grab the Facebook account, grab the Pinterest account, grab the domain name, okay? Because I don't want you to see your business as it is right now, small, unestablished, just getting started. I want you to see your business as it will be in the future. Where do you see your business a year from now? two years from now, five years from now. If it explodes the way that you're hoping it will, don't you wanna own the handles that are attached to your brand and business? Yes, okay? So grab them and then let it be an afterthought. We're not focusing on growing social media right now, we're just focusing on making your money back with this little formula that I used. Step number four, test your products. Okay, you might have this great idea and then you make it and you're like, oh my goodness, that took forever, I don't wanna do it. Okay, back in December when I was already looking at the products I wanted to make, I was testing them out and 
basically giving myself proof of concept if this is something that I can actually turn around and make a profit on that isn't gonna take too much time. I prefer to make products that are quick and easy to produce. Now of the, I ended up coming up with about 27, 28 products. I tried to get to 30, but you know, the creativity just escaped me, <laughs> whatever. I really just go with the products that I like and, and I feel like mm, I can do well with that. I wish there was a better recipe, but that's all I got for you, okay? So of all these products that I came up with, there was one that was gonna be a little different. And this is another key point about your, you know, being successful, constantly asking yourself, how can you take something and make it your own and how do you stay ahead of the curve? So back in December, I made a stockings video on how to make you know, um, Christmas stockings with leatherette patches. If you haven't seen that, you'll wanna watch that video here. As I was making that video, I kept thinking to myself, okay, this is really easy. I like leatherette, it's simple to work with. What is something else that I can do with an upcoming holiday that you know I can create that would sell? And that's where this idea came to me. I thought, okay, well, let me try, um, let me try cutting leatherette. And then I found that it already had adhesive, adhesive backing, that's if you go to JDS Industries, and test it out. So first I tried to find a basket that I liked. And I could have sourced them from um, like Blank's suppliers, like the crazy laser dad. Actually, he does have an Easter basket that he does you know, use. So if you watch this next Easter, you can go there. Uh, Sunshine Laser Supplies, they didn't have any baskets. I wasn't finding what I was looking for, so I had to do a little more digging. So first I went on to Amazon, okay? And I found a basket that I liked. And I didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars because I could buy like three at a time. So I ordered them and I liked them a lot. I tested my proof of concept here with the leatherette. It was relatively easy to produce and make. Now, now came the gamble. Do I order in bulk from overseas and how do I find it overseas? Well, I got lucky. I did use Alibaba.com. I searched for the baskets and then I negotiated back and forth with different suppliers until I found a price point that I was happy with and then I took a risk. And this is also part of being an entrepreneur. I wish I could give you every recipe here, but part of building your business is gonna have some risk, you know, rolled into it. So I ordered 200, praying <laughs> that I wouldn't get scammed and that the product would be just like the one that I ordered off of Amazon. Thankfully, everything went smoothly and I ended up selling out of those 200 baskets later on, ended up having to order, rush order even more and in total sold 400 baskets. Step five, stage your photos to the very best of your ability. Your photos will make all the difference. Let me give you an example. At one point, I was getting tired of making listings and taking photos, so I got lazy and I put up a mediocre photo up on my listing. And then several days went by and nobody bought that product, which I happen to think is really cute. So I was kind of surprised that nobody had ordered one. But I knew why, okay? I was lazy and I, re I needed to retake the photo. So here's an example. This is the photo I took of a dog sign, right? And you can tell it's pathetic. <laughs> and then I actually gave it some effort. I grabbed my dog who happens to be freaking adorable, okay? And I took a new photo with my dog in the photo. If you can get lifestyle photos, that's, that's a plus, okay? Um, I kid you not, that same day that I changed the photo, it sold. So that just goes to show, you may have a good product, but if you don't have it staged properly, it's not gonna move, okay? Also note how the lighting in the second photo is way better. That's because I used an app called Lightroom to help brighten the lighting because the lighting in my room is horrible, <laughs> okay? And that's gonna help it pop a little bit. Look at the difference. This is the photo before the lighting is improved and this is the photo after the lighting is improved. So go the extra mile. If you're not in a position to hire a professional photographer, which most of us are not, you have to knock it out of the park to the best of your ability, okay? Another thing that I did that I love was totally organic. Like nobody told me to do it. I just did it <laughs> and it, it proved to be helpful with my best selling item, okay, for this quarter. I duplicated the listing and I changed the thumbnail. So I made one listing, made a copy, and the only thing I did was change the thumbnail photo. One listing, 
way outperformed the other, okay? And this was another way of telling me which photo are people more likely to click on. Also, Etsy recommends that you have, I don't know if it's Etsy or just in general, but uh, somewhere we read that you wanna, you wanna put 10 photos in your listing, or as many as you can. Do all of my listings have 10 photos? No, all of them do have video. I, they do really want you to do the whole video thing. So I have one little video of every product and as many photos as I could possibly take. I mean, sometimes you just get tired of taking the same, you know, the same image from how many different angles can you possibly take the photo? Um, but you wanna put as many photos as you can, okay? Step six, and this is another big one, add listings consistently, okay? I didn't have all these product photos and then list 30 products all at the same time. I, I don't even know if that's possible because creating one listing can take a lot of time. Instead, plan to add one to two listings a day. Etsy really loves to see you active in the shop. So if you're adding new listings, you are telling Etsy, hey, I'm here to, I'm here to work. You know, pay attention to what I'm bringing to the platform. And this might take you a while. You might have to resize your photos so that they, you know, meet what Etsy wants for the pixel size of the photo. I know I have to do that sometimes. It's a pain and it can take a while. Um, you want to include video in the listing like we just talked about. And you also want to use a website to help you find good keywords. I don't know about you, but I'm not a search engine optimization genius, SEO, okay? So I ended up using a site called E-Rank. There are a lot of sites like this. There's one called Marmalade, Everbee, there's a ton. One of my girlfriends recommended E-Rank, so that's where I ended up. First, I did the free trial version to get a feel for it, and once I felt a little more comfortable, I went ahead and I paid for the monthly subscription. It's about for $4.99, $5, I think to use a month, okay? So that was part of my cost and my investments that I rolled into when I was, um, you know, balancing out my gross profit versus my net profit to pay off the laser. <laughs> Free shipping in your listing is going to be a plus. This is another thing that Etsy likes. Just think about it. You're, you, we as shoppers, we hate paying for shipping. I will, even if I like something, I may not buy it because I have to pay for the shipping. Even if the shipping cost is, I know that the shipping cost is rolled into the price, if it says free shipping, I still wanna buy it more. So do what you can to offer free shipping. In my scenario, I built in the shipping cost into the price of the product, which I am going to show you how I, how I did that in a second video, because if not, we'll be here forever. I do plan to show you the breakdown of my costs and how I ended up choosing the price for my products. Key point here, okay, this is a bonus tip. You are going to make up in numbers what you lack in skill, okay? It took me 29 listings to get one to take off. That's a lot of listings, but I did not give up, okay? In those early days when I was making listings and nobody was buying things, yes, I was nervous and growing insecure, okay? But instead of focusing on the results and going into my shop and seeing how there was, you know, zero, you know, in the order list, I got busy and I started adding more products and more listings and I just focused on the activity, not on the results, which I believe was a huge factor in my success here. All right, so at this point, you've got your listings set up. Now you want to get some traffic there somehow, okay? This is another thing that I did and this is step eight. Sorry, I've got my notes here so I don't lose track. Something that I did organically, naturally, nobody told me to do it. I chose to start a Facebook group for my new business. Am I gonna really run it with a lot of energy? No, I mean, I already run That Mom with a Laser community and that sucks the life out of me because it's a very busy, active group. Um, but I did invite my friends to visit my shop. I didn't ask them to buy anything, but I wanted people to heart the shop and heart the items in the shop because this is also something <clears throat> that Etsy wants to see. They want to see that people are browsing the items in your shop. But believe me, Etsy wants you to sell, okay? They want the money. They want you to come up with a product that is gonna get people to make a purchase, okay? So you can easily ask your friends, say, hey, I just started this new shop or I just listed these new items in my shops. Can you do me a favor and just heart the item and like the shop so that Etsy sees that people are taking a look? It's not that hard for you to ask for a little bit of help, okay? 
Another thing that I did here, um, I actually, in that Facebook group, I offered a special friends and family discount for the new products. I said, hey, I, I am expecting to get really busy and because you're part of my exclusive price, private Facebook group, I am gonna give you a friends and family discount for the next two weeks on anything in the shop. That helped me drive a little bit of traffic to get a few orders initially. These are all things that Etsy likes and wants to see, okay? Even if they went and just put the item in their cart and didn't purchase it, Again, this is something that tells Etsy, okay, people are checking out this item, there's some interest here, maybe we should push it out more and see what happens. Oops, I had my notes in front of me and I skipped it. So the last one was step eight. <laughs> I skipped step seven, but I guess we can do it this way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the next step in this series is to consider paying for ads. <laughs> Once you have people in the shop parting the items, putting it in their cart. Well, I, I don't know at what point I decided to just give it a boost, but once I got a little, a few sales, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test out ads. And it did help. How much it helped, I'm not sure yet, because when I look at my analytics, I still, I mean, I sold way more just from, I guess, a perfect storm. You know, the right keywords, the right photo, the right product, the right timing, than I did for, with paying for ads, but the ads was not, not worth it. I hope that makes sense. So I chose to do $5 a day, and that doesn't mean you get charged $5 a day. You get charged, you get charged up to $5 a day if and only if somebody actually clicks on your listing. So um, that is something that you might wanna test. I did test paying for ads on Facebook as well as TikTok. What I don't know is how to prove that the traffic that went to my site because of Facebook and TikTok, if I, I, I don't know how to prove that I got sales from those ads that I paid for, because I couldn't figure out how to link the shop. It was just, yeah, this just goes to show, I don't know what I'm doing. I tested it out, I couldn't prove whether or not um, it helped, but I did see significant jumps. For example, on the one TikTok ad that I had, um, I got several thousand views on that, whereas everything else just had a couple hundred views. Did it drive traffic to me? Maybe. Um, I feel that it would have sent more traffic to me if I had a link in my bio, which I don't have because it's a brand new shop and you have to have a thousand followers to be able to put the link in the bio. I think if somebody can click on a link, they are way more likely to be taken to your site than if they have to like do the work to get to the site. Right? So I turned those off pretty quickly. I, I chose not to spend too much money and time there. I just chose to stay in my wheelhouse of Etsy. I paid for ads in Etsy, and I did my best to do all the things that I've already laid out for you. And the last one is step nine, be quick to respond to anything and everything that comes to your shop. If somebody asks a question, um, I think the window is considered 24 hours to get back to them, but I don't know. I just, I responded within minutes if I could. Um, nobody, nobody didn't get a response in less, in, like within 30 minutes, everybody had a response. If they had a question about the product, um, I was just on top of it. And Etsy will tell you in the app, they're like, congratulations, you did a good job. You, quick responses are, you know, whatever, good. So message anybody and everybody that asks you a question and get back to them quickly. We also messaged everybody that ordered, which this is over the top and I don't anticipate doing this in the future, but the hustle is real right now. This is a brand new shop. I've got to give it all, everything I got, okay? So every time somebody ordered, they were messaged, thank you for your order. Um, your order is, you know, whatever, I don't know what we said, but basically we just said, thank you for the order. It, we are gonna begin production and it'll be shipped out to you soon. And then when the order shipped, we also messaged them, messaged them to say, um, your order has shipped. If you are happy with the product, please leave us a review so that we can grow or something like that. Okay, Etsy likes all of this. They like seeing that we're connecting with the customers and, and getting active in the platform. They wanna see activity. So stay as active in there as you possibly can. So my friends, that's how I did it. Okay, and if, if you get anything from this, it's my hope that you can get the belief that it can be done. You don't have to be a big influencer. You don't have to know what you're doing. You just have to have a lot of grit and a really hard work ethic. Is it a lot of work? Sure, but you're not gonna make several thousand dollars if you're not willing to hustle. So if you've got the hustle in you, 
take what I've done here, apply it to you, and pay off that laser. I know you can. And with that, that's all I've got for you today, guys. I'll see you guys here soon over at That Mom with a Laser.